Hey there, fellow time travelers. Do you remember those days when black and white TV screens and the smell of fresh popcorn made for the perfect evening entertainment? Oh, nostalgia at its finest. I've got a question for you. Have you ever watched the 1966 movie The Chase? If you have, let's take a trip down memory lane together. And if not, well, it's never too late to join the club of classic cinema aficionados. The Chase was more than just a movie. It was a journey into the heart of suspense and drama. The flickering images on the screen transported us to a world of intrigue, memorable characters, and plot twists that left us on the edge of our seats. I'm sure you've got your own cherished memories of this film. Maybe you were captivated by Marlon Brando's charismatic performance, or perhaps you rooted for Jane Fonda's character as she navigated the tumultuous storyline. It could be the gripping narrative or the unforgettable scenes that etched a special place in your heart. So, why not share those cherished moments with us? Tell us about your favorite scenes, the characters that stole your heart, or any unique experiences you had while watching the chase back in the day. We'd love to hear your stories and reminisce together. And now, let's dive into some random, fascinating facts about this iconic film that you might not know about. Buckle up, folks, it's going to be a cinematic joyride. The Chase, released in 1966 and directed by Arthur Penn, is a gripping and socially charged drama that delves into the complexities of a small Texas town. Adapted from Horton Foote's play, the film weaves a narrative web of simmering racial tensions, personal struggles, and secrets within the community. Its ensemble cast, including Marlon Brando, Jane Fonda, and Robert Redford, brings depth to iconic characters like Sheriff Calder, Bubba Reeves, and Anna Reeves. The film's unique style lies in its ability to explore the darker facets of human nature, while maintaining an atmosphere of suspense and intrigue. It uses the backdrop of a small southern town to reflect the broader societal issues of the 1960s, touching on themes of race, class, and personal morality. Penn's direction, coupled with Lillian Hellman's screenplay, creates a palpable sense of unease that keeps audiences on the edge of their seats. The chase had a notable impact on popular culture by challenging conventional norms of storytelling in its time. Its willingness to tackle pressing social issues head-on, and the powerful performances of its cast left a lasting impression on viewers. The film remains a poignant reminder of the turbulent era in which it was made, and continues to be a thought-provoking cinematic experience. In summary, The Chase is a compelling exploration of human nature and societal tensions within the confines of a small Texas town. Featuring iconic characters and a unique style that made it a standout film of its time, leaving an enduring mark on popular culture. In 1966, the movie The Chase marked British composer John Barry's first American movie score. Barry, renowned for his work on the James Bond film franchise, ventured into the American film industry with this project. His music added a distinct touch to the film's atmosphere, setting the tone for the dramatic events that unfolded on screen. Meanwhile, during the casting process, producer Sam Spiegel chose Robert Redford for a specific reason. He believed in Redford's appeal to women and anticipated a strong reaction from female audiences. This decision proved prescient as Redford's charismatic presence on screen indeed captivated many. However, not all casting decisions were as straightforward. Faye Dunaway, who would later become a Hollywood icon, faced rejection during auditions for The Chase. The casting director infamously told her that she wasn't pretty enough for the movies and suggested she stick to theater. Despite this setback, Dunaway persevered, ultimately proving the naysayers wrong and establishing herself as a prominent actress in the film industry. In 1966, The Chase made waves not only for its storyline but also for these intriguing castings and scoring choices. It serves as a testament to the unpredictable nature of Hollywood and the resilience of those who aspire to make their mark in the industry. In the 1966 movie The Chase, Robert Duvall earned $30,000 for his role, which was his biggest paycheck at that time. This movie marked a significant moment in his career, financially speaking. The film also starred Robert Redford as Bubber, a character on the run. Interestingly, a scene featuring Redford in this movie was later used in the montage of escapes in The Old Man and the Gun, which happened to be Redford's final movie before retiring from acting. 
Marlon Brando, who played the role of Sheriff Calder in the chase, wasn't entirely pleased with his part. He expressed dissatisfaction, claiming that all he did in the picture was wander around. In jest, he began referring to himself as the old lamplighter. This bit of trivia adds a touch of humor to the behind-the-scenes dynamics of the film. The Chase is a 1966 movie that still resonates with its intriguing cast and the memorable performances of its actors. Robert Duvall's payday, Robert Redford's later homage to the film, and Marlon Brando's humorous take on his role all contribute to the rich history of this classic film. In 1966, the movie The Chase hit the silver screen, featuring an ensemble cast that included Marlon Brando, Jane Fonda, and Robert Redford. However, there's an interesting connection between Robert Redford and Jane Fonda in this film. Just a year later, in 1967, they shared the screen again in Barefoot in the Park. This on-screen chemistry continued in 1979 with The Electric Horseman, and much later in 2017 with Our Souls at Night. Their collaboration across different decades showcases their enduring appeal to audiences. Interestingly, Steve McQueen was initially considered for a role in The Chase. He was the producer's early choice for the character Bubber, ultimately played by Robert Redford. This casting decision could have brought a different dynamic to the film, but in the end, Redford took on the role and made it his own. Moreover, the history of the chase dates back to the early 1950s when Gary Cooper acquired the rights for the material. His intention was to team up with Montgomery Clift for the film. Unfortunately, Cooper couldn't secure the financing needed, so he sold the rights to Leland Hayward and Anatole Litvak. While this version of the film didn't come to fruition, it eventually found its way to the big screen in 1966, with Marlon Brando playing the role that Gary Cooper would have taken on. In conclusion, the chase not only offered an intriguing blend of talent on screen, but also had a history filled with potential casting choices that could have altered the course of the film. The collaboration between Robert Redford and Jane Fonda, Steve McQueen's near involvement, and the original plans involving Gary Cooper and Montgomery Clift all contribute to the movie's unique legacy. This article provides insights into the fascinating connections and what-ifs surrounding the making of The Chase, shedding light on the intricate web of Hollywood decisions and casting choices. In the 1966 movie The Chase, there's an interesting detail that might have gone unnoticed by many viewers. At the junkyard in the film, there's a 10 inches black sphere with a flame on top. This peculiar object is known as a highway torch or smudge pot. It contained kerosene and had a wick protected by a small cage at the top. Back in the day, these smudge pots were used to mark road hazards at night. They served as warning beacons to drivers, helping them navigate safely in the dark. However, modern times have replaced these smudge pots with battery-powered flashing lights and reflective barricades and barrels for more efficient road safety measures. Interestingly, the movie's production history also holds some noteworthy details. Producer Sam Spiegel had acquired the property on which the chase was based in the 1950s. Initially, he wanted Marlon Brando to play the role of Jason Jake Rogers, the film's lead character, and considered casting either Marilyn Monroe, Diana Doors, or Kim Novak as his lover, Anna Reeves. However, when production began in 1965, Brando was deemed too old to portray the son, so he ended up taking the part of Sheriff Calder instead. For his role, Brando received a substantial payment of $750,000, and his production company, Pennebaker, was paid a fee of $130,000. Notably, Brando's sister, Jocelyn Brando, also appeared in the film in a small role as Mrs. Briggs. The chase has seen a shift in reputation over the years. While it may not have received widespread acclaim upon its release in 1966, today's fans regard Marlon Brando's performance in the film as one of his most underrated. This movie's legacy has grown, and it continues to be appreciated by audiences as a significant part of cinematic history. In conclusion, the chase from 1966 brings to light the use of highway torches or smudge pots, which were once crucial for road safety at night but have since been replaced by modern lighting and reflective measures. The film's production history, with its initial casting choices, and Brando's pivotal role, adds an intriguing layer to its backstory. Finally, the film's growing reputation among fans is a showcase of Marlon Brando's talent underscores its lasting impact in the world of cinema. 
1966, the movie The Chase faced a tumultuous journey from script to screen, ultimately marking a turning point in the career of producer Sam Spiegel. He enlisted renowned playwright Lillian Hellman to craft the initial screenplay, only to later have it extensively rewritten without her input. Spiegel's decisions didn't end there. He signed then-unknown actor Robert Redford for a key role and brought in lighting cameraman Joseph Lachelle to replace Robert Surtees due to illness. However, it was the strained collaboration between Lachelle and director Arthur Penn that loomed large over the production. Penn believed their discord negatively impacted the film. More significant was Spiegel's refusal to let Penn edit the movie himself, resulting in a final cut that fell short of Penn's vision. This discord led Penn to disown the film. The chase arrived in theaters with high expectations, boasting a talented cast and crew. Yet, it failed to meet both critical and financial expectations, and it marked a decline in Spiegel's career as a film producer. Years later, Michael Schlesinger offered Penn the chance to re-edit the film to his original vision, but Penn declined, citing the painful experience. This movie also saw director Arthur Penn struggling with the demands of working with veteran actress Miriam Hopkins, who needed extra care in her role as an elderly character. Penn, while compassionate toward the former movie legend, acknowledged that her portrayal required additional time and attention. Additionally, The Chase served as the final film for actor Henry Hull, capping his long and storied career in cinema. In retrospect, The Chase stands as a testament to the challenges and conflicts that can arise during the filmmaking process, highlighting the delicate balance between creative vision and producer control. As we draw the curtains on our journey through the riveting tale of The Chase from 1966, I invite you to pause and reflect. This cinematic masterpiece, with its intricate plot and charismatic characters, has undoubtedly left an indelible mark on each of us. The allure of the chase lies not only in its stellar cast, but also in the gripping narrative that explores themes of love, power, and the human condition. It's a timeless gem that continues to resonate with audiences, transcending the confines of its era. Now, it's your turn to share. What are your fondest memories or most profound thoughts about this film? Did its portrayal of the turbulent times and complex characters strike a chord with you? Or perhaps you were captivated by the performances that brought the story to life? Your insights and reflections enrich the tapestry of our collective appreciation for this cinematic treasure. So, whether you've watched it countless times or are just discovering it, share your thoughts and connect with fellow enthusiasts who share your passion for the chase. Thank you for joining us on this cinematic journey through time and for your time and interest in the world of film. We look forward to hearing your thoughts and memories about the chase. Until our next cinematic adventure, remember, every story has the power to touch our hearts and minds, just like this one.